Well, praise the Lord, everybody. How's everybody doing tonight? Hallelujah. Give yourselves a big hand clap offering for making it to God's house. Also, let's welcome our webcast audience watching from around the world. It's time to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope you guys are I hope you guys are ready tonight. You know, in the natural, you don't see nothing. But there is a table that has been set by our Heavenly Father to feast upon His Word, upon His presence. You know, we can't live without His Word. It is a daily bread, not a weekly bread. It's a daily bread. So the Father has prepared a banquet of blessings of God's goodness for you and I and our webcast audience watching from around the world. So I hope you have an appetite, you have a hunger to come before the presence and sit down at the master's table and negotiate, have a conversation about your day and about God's plans for your life. And when you have an encounter with God, I tell you what, no devil, no hell, no sickness can drive you away from the presence of God. I like what the Word of God says. What can separate you and I from the love of God? Tribulation, persecution, principalities, powers of darkness, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, come and feast tonight. Let's feast on the Word of God. Hallelujah. That we may be established, rooted, grounded in the Word of God. For you are supernatural. Glory to God. How many are supernatural tonight? My God, glory to God. Man, I feel like running. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I want you to give your neighbor a high five right where you're at. High five. Glory to God. High five to the children. High five to you guys. High five to a webcast audience. Let's go ahead and praise the Lord tonight. Come on now. Let's do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Put your hands together. Everybody in the house. Yes. At the master's table.
Aleluya. Aleluya. Give the Lord a hand clap. Come on out. Welcome him. Welcome him. Glory, Glory to God. God. Woo. What a table. Amen. Hallelujah. First thing I want you guys to realize is where you're at. You're not at the golf club or at the mall or at Target or anything like that. You are in God's house. Amen. Some people like to play church and some people like to waste time and look and see what you're wearing and see if it matches or see if it's any good. Or, but you know what? There's some people that I call the remnant of God that are hungry for God. Amen. And that they come into a place like this to have an encounter with God. They don't come here to play games or or to waste your time or theirs. that They are here so focused and they're on hot pursuit after God because they understand that God is the answer to all their situations and circumstances. And when you come in here, if you meet these kind of people, they might be in here and they might not even say hello to you. They might not even notice you. It's not that they're trying to be mean or anything, but they're just focused and they can't wait to meet this God that the Bible talks about all over. Amen. My question to you is what did you come here to get? Who did you come and see? I hope you didn't come to see Isaiah or myself. I, I hope you came to meet God face to face tonight. Face to face with an almighty God that lives. It's not the God of Muhammad or or any other God that is dead. You're the God you're serving or looking and going after a God that lives. He is the resurrection and the life. You know, in heaven, in heaven, the angels go, they circle around the throne of God and they say, Holy, holy, holy every day. Holy. And, oh my God, I feel the anointing already. Holy and holy and holy. And they don't get tired of saying holy. You know why? Because they see a different side of God that they hadn't seen before. And the Bible records all over the Bible that there are names mentioned of God where he would manifest his power in a different way. In the book of Exodus, he's known as the, the uh, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals. And maybe you came here tonight and say, you know what, that's, that's the God that I need to meet tonight. That's the God that I need to encounter, the God that heals because my body is going through something and I need the God that heals to manifest in my life. For Abraham, he, he manifested as Jehovah Jireh. And he said, the Lord will provide. The lamb was stuck in a thicket. And he says, the Lord will provide. And I don't know if you are going through some hardships financially. But it's the God that, that provides that will meet you tonight. If you have faith and go after him tonight. Who is it that you need? He is the great I am. He is all that you'll ever need. The great I am. Well, I need, I need a breakthrough. He is that great I am. He's also the Alpha and the Omega, meaning he's been in your beginning and in your end. And he's still with you. He's Emmanuel, the God that is with you. If you feel all alone, call him the God, Emmanuel, the God that is with us. God Almighty, I, I don't know what name you need to call. But he is here and he is now and his power is present to heal as the Bible says. This is miracle territory and the saints of God are about to have an encounter with God Almighty and his power is about to be released among the saints and you won't be the same. You won't be the same. He is the great I am. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the Lord, your shepherd. Maybe you need direction. You don't know what to do in your life. You don't know which, which way to turn. You don't know what to do with your family. But he is the Lord, your shepherd. Maybe that's the name that you need to call on. He, he is the Lord, your shepherd. When you don't know your left from your right, your front from your back, he is the Lord, your shepherd. He'll whisper in your ear and he'll tell you, go this way or go that way. He is the Lord, your shepherd. Amen. Glory to God.
He is the Lord Jehovah Shammah, the Lord that is present. You're not alone. He is present right here and right now. Do you understand where you're at right now? You're in his house. And in his house, there's many gifts. And I don't know what gift or manifestation of the Spirit you need tonight. But if you will call on the name of Jesus. It encompasses all that you'll ever need. It is the name that is above every other name. It's the name of Jesus. I got to be careful when I say that. Because when I say the name of Jesus, demons flee. Darkness flees. Sickness has to bow out. It's the name of Jesus. Oh, maybe you need to proclaim his name. His name is all powerful. His name has all authority invested in that one name. And if you can let it out of your heart and out of your lips, things are about to change for your life. Oh, your story is about to change this evening. Maybe you're dealing with addictions and you need a breakthrough. Well, he is the deliverer. He is the Lord of the breakthrough. He is the one that breaks chains. He's the one that destroys yokes. He's the one that removes burdens. He's the one. He's the Abba Father. He's up and close. Your personal father. You may say, I don't have a father. Well, he is Abba Father. He is Abba Father. He knows how to take care of his children. Down to a thousand generations. Oh, he is so good. I want you to close your eyes and I want you to think about what you need and find his name. If you don't know what other name to say, say the, the name of Jesus. It is the name of Jesus. Oh, everything changes at that name. You understand the demons flee. You see creation and heaven and hell understand the name of Jesus. They bow out at the name of Jesus. They don't have a problem understanding the name of Jesus. It is the believer that has to get it in their mind and understand that that's the most powerful name in heaven, on earth, and under the earth that has been given to the saints of God that you can use it and back away the enemy, destroy yokes, and receive your healing tonight. Tonight's your night. Can you close your eyes and begin to think and call on the name of Jesus? It is that name. There is salvation in no other name but the name of Jesus. My God, we have faith in your name. That when we release the name of Jesus, I understand that things move in the realm of the spirit. Because I am doing it in faith. It's in the name of Jesus. I'll never forget that name, Father. We worship you, my God. All over the building, lift up your hands and say, We worship you, God. We worship you, Jehovah Jireh. We worship you, Jehovah Rapha. We worship you in this, in this place. We worship you, Holy God. His name is Holy. We worship you. We worship you. Can we sing in the mention of his name? Come on, guys.
Stop. 
same God that picked you up in your darkest hour. He's still the same God that tucked you in when nobody was there but he was and you fell asleep crying in his arms. He's still the same God that delivered you from that car accident. He's still the same God that healed you when the doctor said there was no hope and there was not a cure. He's still the same God that was so close to you and he came and healed you. And he gave you back your health. He's still the same God. He's still the same God that gave you exactly what you needed at the right time. You thought you were gonna lose it all. Your car, your house, you thought you were gonna lose everything, your children, but God is the one that loved you enough to reach into your life and to bless you and turn your life around he's still the same God but God is asking what has changed because it's not the same worship it's not the same love it's not it's a distant love it's a distant worship God is asking what has changed because he's not changed. You were in hot pursuit after him. You said nothing else matters. I just want you and I want your presence. I want to know you above all things. My job will not stop me. My relationships will not stop me. But somewhere down the line, you got distracted and you fell by the wayside. And God is asking you tonight, will you come after him again? Will you lay, adopt, will lay aside everything else? What is it that keeps you from coming after him again? Remember when you worshipped him and you felt the fire all over your body. Remember when you worshipped him and you saw visions in an instant. Remember when you worshipped him and you actually saw angelic activity around you. What has changed? For he has not stepped back. It is you who has stepped back. God is calling you tonight to come close, come close, come close, because he still loves you, he still loves you, and he's asking, will you give him your heart again, will you come into the fire again, will you come into his presence again, will you deny everything else just for him, and call him your only one. He is the Holy One of Israel. He is the only one in your life. Will you come after Him again tonight? Will you lay it down 
aside everything that hinders your walk and come after him with all your heart and all your soul and all your might. Will you spend the night with him again? Remember that. You are spending the night with him. All you can think about was him and his word. Will you come after him tonight? And will you step in the fire again? And he'll set you ablaze. He'll set you ablaze with his power and his fire. But you have to come after him. But you have to come after him. And he'll set you on fire. He'll change everything around you. And he'll cause you to increase and to multiply. He'll cause you to excel in all that you do. But you must come after him and let the foundation be correct. He must be the foundation to everything you do. Because everything you build will crumble and will fall. Because it must be him and only him. Only Jesus will do. So God is calling you. Will you come after him? Come after him. Come after him. Lift up your hands and worship. Lift up your hands and worship. And let him fill you with fire again. Let your heart be set up late again. Remember the gifts of the spirit that used to work in your life. They haven't been working lately. Why? Because you step back. You got distracted and you listen, you started listening to other voices, other voices instead of the voice of your father. You listen to other voices instead of the voice of your father. Come back to him. Come on, worship all over the building. Come on, Lady Anna.
thirsty for you we come to your table to me with you oh we're hungry we're desperate for more of you I'm desperate for you still his child and he loves you his love is deeper wider than you'll understand you're still his child don't keep away from him don't look at your your wrong God, God is not even looking at that he just is looking at you as a person and he loves you dearly and he doesn't like it when you wander away because he misses the fellowship with you. He misses the intimate moments. He misses the times that you laugh together. He misses those times that nobody knows about but just you and him. He misses those times. So don't worry about, oh, this or that. Don't worry about what you need to get done. Don't worry that you haven't done everything right. Just, just stay in his presence. By his blood, you come straight to his presence and he picks you up and he sets you on firm ground. Nothing shaking, nothing confusing because your father has you in his hand again. Come on. He's your father. Come on. Thank you. 
chapter 3 talks about a lame man the Bible says that this lame man was constantly being brought to the temple called beautiful at the gates 
and people had to carry this man who was lame. And I can just imagine this man with his weaknesses coming so close to church but being not being able to come to church not being able to go inside the building but always staying on the outside his life was a life of outside of church so close but not in not having to not having to experience the presence of God because he was dropped when he was little he was he was he was lame from his mother's womb he could not walk with this weakness in his body he was lame so everybody every single time had to carry him and leave him by the temple that was his life his life was going nowhere his life must have been confusing he must have had so many questions in his heart why me God why has this happened to me what did I ever do to, to deserve this why I'm trying to go to church but I can't quite make it there if I can only find the answer the answer to, to make my life whole I don't know what it is but I'll keep going to church I'll keep going to church coming so close one day maybe somehow some way I'll be able to go inside the church building and experience his presence I don't know if this describes you where your life is going nowhere people are always having to carry you always having to pick you up your life is confusing you don't know what to do you feel helpless and useless and you might be saying in your heart why me why did this happen to me I've tried to do everything right but I am lame I cannot go I cannot move on my own and the Bible says at the, at the hour of prayer, John and Peter were walking right by this man. And they looked at him. And the Bible says that he fixed his eyes upon him, expecting to receive something from him. But Peter said, silver and gold I do not have. Silver and gold will not help you. You've tried the silver and the gold at other times, but it's not helped you. What I do have, I give to you. It's the name of Jesus. It is the name of Jesus. He said at the name of Jesus, he reached out his hand and picked him up. And the lame man began to praise and to worship. And now he went inside church and he began to experience the presence of God just like everybody else. My question to you, is what is your answer to your situation this man thought it was gold and silver but it was always in the name of Jesus if you can run into somebody that has the name of Jesus inside them if you can fit that name you might tonight be made whole you might tonight be recovered and restored if you can tap into that name of Jesus your life will change and no longer will you be called the lame but the blessed no longer will you be sick but you'll be blossoming in everything that you do but if you can tap into that name Peter said it was faith in the name of Jesus that made that man whole it was faith in the name of Jesus that made that man, man whole I wonder if tonight anybody is carrying the name of Jesus you might be carrying the name but you might be looking at the gold and the silver I'm telling you get your eyes back on that name of Jesus for that is the answer to your situation right now right now it is the name of Jesus it is the name of Jesus the devil has been attacking you and your family. He's been at your house daily, tormenting you and your home. And you could be a Christian that has the name, but you didn't know that was the answer to your situation. I'm telling you tonight, rise up, giant. Rise up, overcomer. Rise up, champion. 
and begin to use the weapon, which is that name above all names. It's above sickness and disease. That name is above cancer and tumor. That name is above COVID-19. That name is above divorce. That name is above division. That name is above every other name. And if you can just use that name and release chains will be broken, yokes will be destroyed, and burdens be removed. Yeah. It's at that name. It's at that name. Glory. Can we pray tonight? I want us to pray tonight. If you're sick in your body tonight, I want you to lay hands on your body and you're going to speak to your body in that name. Oh, that name is holy. Nobody else deserves the glory but Jesus. That name is so powerful. The Bible says that every knee will bow in heaven, earth, and under the earth and confess that Jesus is Lord. You see, that name is known in heaven and is respected in heaven. The angels of heaven know that Jesus, that name of Jesus, is the highest name you can have. The earth, creation, the trees, the weather knows that Jesus is the highest name you could have. Every devil, every demon, listen to me. Every devil, every demon knows that Jesus is Lord. They know that. They know that. The Bible says that the sons of Sceva the sons of Sceva tried using a name that wasn't theirs to cast out some devils and they say in the name of the one that that Paul preaches in that name I, I try to I cast you out and the devil looked and says who are you because Jesus I know and Paul I know but who are you and the Bible says that those demons came upon those people and stripped them that's all i'm gonna say they stripped them but you see what i'm trying to tell you is heaven understands that the name of jesus is above every name creation understands that the name of jesus is above every name the devil that's been tormenting you understands that the name of jesus is above him so when you begin to pray in a minute you're going to mention that name and I want you to have faith in that name it's important you don't just throw the name of Jesus just like any other it's not like any other you have faith in that name you have confidence in that name your belief is in that name and when you release that name you understand that power and authority had just left your mouth in that moment power and authority has just left your mouth in that moment. Amen. So I want you to lay hands on you right now. If you're feeling sick or whatever it may be, I don't know. Remember, the name of Jesus is above whatever you're going through in your body. So in the name of Jesus, say with me, in the name of Jesus, I command this body to be made whole. This body, this body is the house of God. House of God. God, and God and I are one. We both live in this body. Every devil, Every devil sickness, sickness and, disease, and disease and all that is abnormal, that is abnormal must, flee must flee right now, right now. In, the in the name of Jesus. I tell you, you must fall off, must fall off. and leave and in the name of Jesus. Jesus, now, now. you are gone, gone by the authority, the authority that is in the name of Jesus. Right now, I confess and declare that by the power of the name of Jesus, I am made whole. Body, be restored. Be restored. Everything normal, everything functions. In Jesus' name, lungs, you are blessed. Heart, 
you are blessed. Arteries, you are blessed. Intestines, you are blessed. Bladder, you are blessed. Kidneys, you are blessed. Brain, you are blessed. Arms, bones, ligaments, muscles, skin, you are blessed in the name of Jesus of Christ right now. Right now, in Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen and amen. I have agreed with you for healing in your body right now. I hope you understand that something just happened in your body. Something just happened. Something just happened. And you're going to testify of something happening this night. Because you used the name of Jesus differently. You had faith in that name tonight. And you spoke with power and authority. In Jesus name. Now. Can we do one more? Or can we do one more prayer? If you have somebody who is not saved or, or maybe is out doing stuff that they shouldn't be doing. Whatever it may be. I want you to say this with me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I command every demon. Every demon. Every spirit, every spirit. that is upon my loved one right now. I break your power over him or her in the name of Jesus. Say it again. I break your power in the name of Jesus over that person, whoever it is, name it. I break your power, Satan. I break your power over my loved one right now in the name of Jesus. And I claim deliverance for my loved one right now and salvation comes into his life comes into her life freedom i claim freedom for that person right now in jesus name angels of god go forth and minister to that loved one in jesus name amen and amen can we do one more one more and then that's it Finances. Let's do one on finances. Because sometimes the devil takes your money and you don't even know it. All these things that are happening in this world, in this system of this world, there's money being taken out of your life. Money that was taken out of your father's life or your grandfather's. And tonight I want to go ahead and claim that money back. To come into your life. Amen. The devil has got to let go of what belongs to you. Okay. Can we do that? So in the name of Jesus. I command, I command every devil, every devil, the devil of, de of lack devil of and, of debt, and of debt. I command you, I, command you, I, speak, to you I speak to you in Jesus' name. Let go, let go of my money and of my goods in Jesus' name. I command you to leave it. Let it go, let go. Right, now, right now in Jesus' name. And I claim everything. That belongs to me. Everything from my father and my grandfather. I call it in and I claim the wealth and the riches right now. I claim it in the spirit in Jesus name. Now angels go and collect and bring them into my home right now. You have an assignment in Jesus name. Prosper in that which I command in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Glory to God. Glory, glory, glory. If I were you, from this day forward, you should have a step, or what is it? A pep in your step? I don't know. You should have a song in your heart, a praise in your mouth. Why? Because something happened tonight in your favor. Amen. Well, go ahead and have your seat. Let's get our tithes and offerings ready. Get our tithes and offerings ready. Glory to God. Those of you watching us online, the number is 247 4442. 247 4442. 
when you tithe and you give your offering, you're engaging this covenant that God has with you. You are a descendant of Abraham and the blessing is on you. The blessing is upon you and your home. I like to say this to my son and my daughter. The blessing is on you. I don't feel it. It's okay. The blessing is on you. And everywhere you go, the blessing follows you. And everything you touch is going to prosper. Not because of you, but because the blessing's on you. And this is how we engage that blessing, Manny. Through tithes and offerings. When we do this... We're setting up the next generation. They, they are not going to do without. They shall not experience sickness and disease. They shall not experience poverty. Why? Because the blessing is on them. Amen. Because of what you do this day. If you have your offering or your envelope ready, make your way to the front. Make your way to the front. I want you to pray for them. After you pray, you can go ahead and dismiss. Pray the blessing. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father God. Lord, you always give us an instruction, my Lord, for us to obey. Because you always have a blessing behind every instruction that you give us, Lord. And your people here before your presence and watching on the webcast, they're obeying your voice. They're obeying your word, my Lord. And in that word, there is a blessing. And Lord, right now, we release the blessing of Abraham to manifest in the lives of your precious people. Bless them. Bless their relationships. Bless their children. Bless their pocketbooks. Bless them at their work. Bless them in their business. Let the blessing of the Lord be manifested in the work of their hands, Lord. You have commanded the blessing upon them and upon their storehouses. That their savings account, their banking accounts flourish, be fruitful, multiply, Lord, because you said so. And we believe your word right now. I declare abundance of blessings so that we can give more into the kingdom. That souls may come to know Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's what it's all about, my Lord. You empower us as we empower others, my Lord. So in the name of Jesus, I declare life fruitfulness, multiplication. Let them be a well-watered garden, my Lord, that everything that they do, everything that they say, the blessing be upon it. And the result is increase, increase, increase in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And if you believe that tonight, say amen and amen. Go ahead and sow your seed tonight in faith. Hallelujah. Those watching on the webcast, in Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah.